All right, well, where I was at, it was kind of tough to tell because uh, where I was at, my back was turned. It was one little doorway, right, that this guy came through. And obviously he was there, so it's not like he was a random person. He was just a Madden competitor, essentially. But it was one doorway that he came through, and when he came through the door on his left right here was the streaming setup, you know, facing the door that he came through. It was two boys, Joe Rice at the time, and the broadcast booth was to the right of that. You know? And essentially, shout out my man Gangster with the sub. So the bro so when he walks in the door right to his left right there is the streaming setup. That's where True Boy was was the first seat. Where True Boy sat, that is directly where I sat and played Tweez ten minutes before that, and I sat in that chair for an hour. So that's another thing that consistently goes through my mind is that, you know, if he'd have came in ten minutes earlier or fifteen minutes earlier, I would have been the one sitting in that seat. <clears throat> so right to his left right there is True Boy, Joe Rice who was right next to True Boy and managed to make it out unscathed. God bless him. Then behind them was another set of TVs. So you have TVs up against the back wall, the streaming set up here, and you have the broadcast booth in the corner. Mind you, it's just a long, skinny hallway. That's all. So it's TVs everywhere. And when you when he walks through the door, essentially straight ahead of him playing is, is VTech. And I want to say Drini are playing right there. I want to say those are the two that are sitting there. I'm not sure. But to that TV, to their right, is where I'm playing Scuba Jake, right there. So if you walk through the door, probably about 10 degrees to the shooter's right is exactly where I'm sitting with my back turned to the door because I'm, I'm looking at the TV. And, um, and obviously in between us, because there's such a small space, which most Madden tournaments are, is the, uh, the people are standing watching the game. I had just finished playing Tweez, so... You know, more people are watching me, and that's where Larry and Spotman were directly behind me watching the game. You know what I'm saying? That's where they were at the time. And, like I said, while you're playing the game, all you're doing, obviously, you guys all play Madden. And what you're doing is you're paying attention to the TV. And, mind you, the monitors are probably not even 30 inches. The monitors are, shoot, the monitors at the time are, you know, 24-inch monitors. So me and, and, and Jake, if anybody met Jake, is, Jake is taller than me. So we sitting here huddled up. So when you're looking at the monitor, you locked into the monitor. And you hear just a loud ass pop was the first one. And you don't know what, it, obviously you don't know what it is. You don't know, you think it's something wrong with like the sound or something fell. You don't think somebody's shooting at you. That's not really something that, that goes through your mind because you're never really put in that situation. But after the first pop, I, mean, I guess you hear another one, and that's when I got hit in the head. And I don't think it dropped me to the ground when I got hit in the head. I think I in in instinctually dropped to the ground. And I remember looking after I fell under this desk that's up against the back wall. I looked back into the doorway, which, mind you, is probably 10 feet away. It's not far. And I remember seeing the, the guy just unloading the gun. I remember vividly seeing him looking at his face while he's unloading the gun back to the left. And I'm assuming that's when Cole had got hit because after he got done shooting in the middle between Spy Me and Larry and obviously True Boy and Tony and, you mean, Drenny, and he came back, he reloaded the gun and looked the other way, and that's when he must have got Cole. And at some point, I realized that laying on the ground 10, 12 feet in front of the shooter was not a good idea, and I had wound up getting up and running to the bathroom. And I run to the bathroom, boom. Get into the bathroom, mind you, my face is bleeding like profusely, like dripping all over the floor. And I remember getting into this bathroom and I, I was probably four or five, six people were there. And um, I remember Deliverance's girlfriend was there. She was the main one that I remember was there. And she was helping me like wipe my face. And at the time I'm like, man, I'm good, I'm okay. I'm not, I mean, this doesn't, I just got scraped. I got smacked in the face. And obviously, you don't think you got hit with a bullet. You just think, you know, I got hit with a chair or somebody threw some shit. And that's pretty much what I was thinking. At, at the time, it's just surreal. You don't even think like, you know, this guy just shot. This guy just shot up the whole place. You know, you don't think that. That's not something that you would think happened. Even while I looked at him while I was laying on the ground, I was like, you know, that's this. It's still not real. It's hard to believe. 
So essentially, we're in this bathroom huddled up. Because at the time, you're just like, I want to get somewhere where I'm not going to get shot. Huddled up in the bathroom. Eventually, you open the door and you come out. So this is all the way back. I'm at the other end of this long, narrow, rectangle uh, hallway. We started by the, where the streaming was, where the shooting happened. And I went all the way back down the end where this bathroom was. So after I come out of the bathroom, there's nobody really left. And, and I go, and my first thing is, let me go get my bag. My bag was under where I was playing. And I go get my bag because my phone is in there and my wallet is, everything I, when I'm in a Madden tournament, everything I have, I put in my bag. Now you'll walk around my bag all over the place. So my wallet, my phone, controller, t-shirts, jam, whatever I have at the time, I go and put in this bag. On my way, go back to get my bag. That's when I saw True Boy just uh, just slumped over in the chair, and it was that's when I realized, you know, this was something serious. This was a tra- This guy really murdered people in the man's home because that that's when it really hit you, like, dude, like this dude. I mean, people were really dead, and people were really hurt. And I remember, like I said, I remember seeing. Like, I'll never forget seeing True Boy just slumped in the chair because right right where my bag was was right where all that stuff was. And then, along that back wall where I was playing was the door out. The door out, the door out actually went out to like a patio along the river. Like, like it's a, in hindsight, if you really think about it, it really, uh, hindsight, it really, should, it really was a decent little area. But anyway, so the back door kind of goes out to the patio where the river is. And I remember walking out. Out of that door of the back room, of that back rectangle room, out of that door, the one door in the middle to go out to the patio, that's where Spotman was just laid out on his back, and you almost had to climb over him to get out into this, this, the wide open area where you felt more safe, because in that little ass room, we were sitting ducks. So after I got out of the bathroom, I saw my friend True Boy slumped in the chair that he was playing a game in, the same chair that I was playing a game in 10 minutes before him. And um, and I saw Spot Me laying down on his back, just barely getting out the door from where the shooter was, and that's when I ran the Hooters. And at the time, obviously you're just trying to get around somebody that you know, somebody with a uh, face that you you know you're real comfortable with. Obviously you kind of know everybody, but at the time everybody was running around with just just with terror. And so I go down the next building at that girl's house. His left is Hooters. And that's when I saw, I mean, I think I saw RG and Skimbo was there and I saw ghosts and everybody's just panicked. Everybody's just really uh, upset and obviously scared out of their minds. And um, the first thing I did, I called my mother. Mind you, this is why I'm still bleeding like shit because like, you know, the, the uh, like I said, I just got this little cut, but I got hit in the head and it's just bleeding. And so I called my mother and I said, listen, man, this is going to be on the news. I am fine. I am okay. I am safe. At the time, we didn't really know where the shooter was, what happened to him. It was pretty much like, let's get in the bathroom and hide. That's where Skimbo was grabbing me. He was like, yo, let's go in this bathroom and hide. Let's just, and and mind you, it was like 20 people in a little bathroom, like with the door barricaded. Because we didn't, because at the time, you don't know how many people were shooting because it it was so many shots. You didn't know really what was going on. You just wanted to see some friendly faces really in a safe spot. And um, after that is when we stayed in Hooters. That's where Larry was, and Larry. We saw Larry was hurt, and we were, he was trying to get him some paramedics first. And I was uh, after that. This is when my face was bleeding, and police were like, "Oh, we're gonna wait. We're gonna get you with the ambulance." We're going. And I'm like, "No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine." And eventually, they came to me and said, "You know, you gotta go in the ambulance. You got hurt." So they wiped my face off. They took my stuff. I gave my bag to my man Vilma, who was with me. Obviously, I gave him all my stuff. All I had was my phone. They put me in the ambulance. They put six IVs in me. Mind you, I still just have this one little scratch on my head. So, they put these six IVs in me. I got two in my hands and my arms. And I still got little tape, you know, marks from all the damn tape they had on me. And so, I get in the ambulance. I'm calling everybody that I can. Like, you know, I'm safe. I'm good. And the time you're with, maybe, I mean, you talk to the, the main people that you came with and you want to make sure they're all good. Because obviously, like I said, I saw my two, front, my two friends just slumped. But I didn't know what else happened. Where did the shooter go? Did he go back out through the room, back out through the bar? Did he see anybody else? So immediately I called. 
obviously I saw Vilma, I saw Bugs, I saw Skimbo. I called my man Khalif, the dude that was shooting the video, shooting the uh, production, shooting the whole uh, documentary for me. I called him, made sure he was good. I called Gooch, who was doing the play-by-play, -play, and guy from Philly that I know. I called him, just make sure everybody was good. That I, I knew immediately, obviously, and um, they take me in the ambulance. They got like oxygen, they, so they bring me to the emergency room, and that's when like I mean, there's 16 nurses on. You're like panicking, like this dude was in a you know a shoot. He was in a shooting. They cut your clothes off. That's when he shaved my little head, you know what I'm saying, right here, so they could see this little cut. And then they put me they put me in a room and stuff. And there's like three other people. Fitzmagic was actually right next to my uh my same room. And uh that the shoot, that's where I was pretty much until the next day. I wanted to leave that night. I had a flight the next morning at five o'clock. So I sit in the emergency room probably for six hours until fifteen new doctors come in. And um, eventually they say, we want you to stay overnight. Now, that was their decision to stay overnight. I'm calling everybody. I call my parents. I call, you know, everybody that I know that I'm close to. And they decide I'm going to stay overnight. So, okay, that's fine. I'm going to stay overnight. So, I stay overnight in the hospital. I, at nighttime in the hospital, obviously, Skimbo and Bugs and Vilma, they all came. Skimbo was there most all night. My man, Matt and Universe, came by. Kiv and uh, Crush, they came by. For a while, obviously, see me, Fitzmagic, and a couple other people in the same hospital. And um, the next morning, woke up. Can I get out of here? I need to change my flight. And I did about, they asked me if I wanted to do interviews. And I said, it. And you know, at like noon, I will do as many interviews as possible because I feel obligated to do these interviews because I want people to know the right story because a lot of times the uh, media obviously twists it to where the main story is about the shooter, like why did he do this, who was the shooter, where was he, all this, that, and the third. And my biggest concern was that the story was on my two friends that I saw dead and my two friends that lost their lives. And the rest of us that were affected by this immensely, not only physically, but emotionally, because I feel physically fine, but you know, emotionally, I'm not there at all, really. So Pretty much, that was why I wanted to do the interviews. That's why I did about 15 interviews in a row. Did two more phone interviews on the way to the airport, which my man, Mateo, I know y'all, if y'all know man, y'all know my man, Mateo. He lives in Jacksonville, so he linked up with me and actually took me to the airport that night. And um, I, I did two more interviews on the phone. I actually got home around midnight, and there was, there was reporters waiting for me in the Philadelphia airport. So there's another couple more interviews when I got home last, uh, Monday night in the airport. My mother and my sister picked me up at the airport, dropped me off, took a nap, or took a little bit of sleep. I Like I said, the last couple nights I've been able to sleep two or three hours. But then once I'm up, I can't stop thinking about it. So I got to do something. Like I'll come here and do some graphics or I'll, you know, that's when I made the t-shirts, when I make the emotes, just something, just something so I can get my mind off what's going on and really focus my energy somewhere else. Otherwise, I can't stop thinking about it, to be real. So, pretty much, uh, that was the Sunday till right now, you know. And I really feel like one thing that I, I actually had another interview last night with uh, David Fleming from ESPN Magazine. And one of the biggest things I wanted to say was that this tragedy will show how strong this community is. And ultimately, that is my goal, is to as a leader of the community is to always push forward and always make sure that, you know, we use this as a positive, as, as terrible as that sounds, there's something good that has to happen from this. And, and we have the ability to do that. Nobody else, you know, people can spin it, like media can spin it any way they want and they will, they'll spin it what's good for their ratings. But ultimately we have the ability to make this something good and make this something great out of the tragedy of us losing two great players and two great men this weekend so that's pretty much my little story for the weekend i've told it to pretty much everybody i interviewed with and shout out to uh return to king for the sub or my man did the little gift him a sub and that's pretty much it i'm doing all right i'm perfectly healthy just trying to stay active and this weekend obviously you guys heard that ea is canceling the um dc challenger as they should, it was the right thing to do. Um, yeah, definitely the right thing to do. You can't continue to play Madden under these circumstances. 
And but the thing about them canceling the DC Challenger, obviously I'm close with Nerd Street, who was hosting the DC Challenger in GexCon, which is a giant gaming convention. So what we're going to do, we've been talking about it the last two days, is that we have this venue in the middle of this giant gaming convention with a bunch of the gaming community, not the man community, but the gaming community around in D.C. And we're going to do a charity stream. I'm going to be there in D.C. Saturday, all day Saturday. We are going to stream from GexCon in D.C. Obviously, we've been working. Uh, shout out my man Red Banner, just out there throwing around the uh, subs. But we're going to go ahead and work. We're going to go ahead and work and do a huge charity stream on Saturday for, uh, obviously, for True Boy and for Spot Me. It's something that uh, I really have a passion about. I'm going to try to get as many pro man players. Obviously, the guys on the East Coast, I've already hit most of them up and said, can you come out, show some support. We're probably going to play some weekend league or something like that. So if you're anywhere near D.C. and want to come out to GexCon, which is obviously a huge gaming convention, no matter what type of gaming you're into, you're going to have something to do there. And I will definitely be there um, Saturday all day streaming live from DC GasCon. So if you're there, please just go on call the We Are Man benefit. So I'll definitely be pushing that the next couple days. Obviously, everything we earn there, everything I earn from streaming the next couple days, any donations or something like that will be put obviously to this GoFundMe, which is in the link below and in the description below. So you can check it out and donate some money to two of my friends that are no longer with us. Hold up, wait 